If we're so driven by bigotry and hate that we attack our fellow citizens as traitors, if they're born in another country or they don't look like us, God help us. Yeah, God help us. It's amazing a weasel can produce crocodile tears. <laughs> yes, it's time. It is time once again for... Everything is racist. It's true. First up, remember the Chicago mayor who looks like she hasn't slept since 1972? <laughs> I can't blame her. In that city, the constant gunfire will keep anyone up at night. Lori Lightfoot, racist, continues to defend her decision to only speak with non-white reporters. You know, because that's what racists do. I would absolutely do it again. And I'm unapologetic about it because it spurred a very important conversation, a conversation that needed to happen, that should have happened a long time ago. You know, she's right. Her racist behavior spurred a very important conversation about how racist she is. I love that logic. Now watch me start a dialogue on arson with these oil-soaked rags and a Bic lighter. Sure, people died, but look how much we've learned about the importance of smoke alarms. But it makes perfect sense coming from a leftist because to them, talk is more important than action. And Lightfoot much prefers the race conversation over the crime one. She's the Andrew Cuomo of Chicago. Only her bodies aren't piling up in nursing homes. They're piling up in the streets. And they're brown. And they're black. And they're young. Imagine if she were white. People would start asking questions like, is this deliberate? But dare criticize her over her record. You know what she's going to say. Mayor, in recent months, uh, there have been questions raised about your, your temperament and uh, your reaction to criticism. Uh, Tribune editorial used the term irascible. Uh, how much of this do you think might have to do with the fact that you're a woman, and specifically a black woman? About 99% of it. Women and people of color are always held to a different standard. I understand that. I've known that my whole life. Why isn't it 100%? Her answers are as predictable as cats' hangovers. But according to Lightfoot, pointing out her record is racist. Then again, to her, pointing out that she has food on her face is racist. Takes a special person presiding over mass murder to think that they're the victim. <clears throat> she expects you to bleed to death on the pavement, grateful your mayor is not some old white guy. But you know what else is racist? Comedy. According to racist author of White Fragility, Robin DiAngelo. So comedy is... Um... It's, I think it's an excuse to get to be racist, right? Like irony. And I think TV shows like Family Guy and um, South Park and maybe a little bit The Simpsons, right, allowed white people to be racist self-consciously, right? Like I know I'm being racist and therefore it doesn't count and it's okay. Mm, who better to tell us what's funny than someone who has stage four cancer of the funny bone? This grifter wouldn't know funny if you gave her the F-U-N-N -N on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> so funny white people are racist, cool. And writing a book generalizing about white people isn't. And what's more fragile than someone who can't take a joke? Think about it. The loudest voices shouting about racial inequality are often weak-kneed, virtue-signaling Caucasians. Yet what have they done to correct the injustice and the in inequality? Besides putting a BLM sign in their front yard and a rainbow coexist bumper sticker on their Tesla, isn't it time they resign their jobs to make room and correct this injustice? Every lily white leftist in a comfy editorial position at a magazine or a TV show or college, it's time to move on and fix your privilege. Anna Wintour, say hello to Vanessa Bush. Jimmy Kimmel, say hello to Chris Tucker. Paul Krugman, say hello to Coleman Hughes. And Chris Cuomo, say hello to Candace Owens. I wonder what the angry black male has to say. I knew I'd be here for you today. I'm ready today. 
Hi. All right, kids, let me break this down for you. I got a yellow apple. Hi. And I got a green apple. Hi. What? You don't talk to yellow apples? Because they're yellow? <laughs> oh. Oh, racist. Apple. Oh. And Uncle George gets to be a racist. You should have known better, right? Oh, I don't talk to you unless you're yellow. You don't? Mm-hmm. Mm. You should have known better. Racist ass apple. Still good, though. That's that. Nicely done. So if you're white and find race behind everything, it's time to put your money where your motor mouth is. Get out. If you're, you know, you're big on a $15 minimum wage, so give it a try. How great would it be to have Brian Stelter say to you, you, know, you want to supersize that? Just check your fries before you leave. <laughs> but if you don't quit, then clearly you're the racist, thinking you deserve that job over a person of color. So until all white leftists resign their jobs, we must all hold them accountable. Either step up or shut up. Let's start by demanding that every white person at CNN resign immediately. But then again, with their ratings, who's going to notice? <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests. There's no copay to see her tonight. Fox News medical doctor Jeanette Nesway. Ness what? Ness what? <laughs> He's got a face for comedy and the looks of a Starbucks barista. WesternRazor.com spokesman David Angelo. Yeah. Once you get to know her, she's even worse. Fox News contributor Cat Tim. And if he says he's so hungry he could eat a horse, hide your horse. My massive sidekick and host of Nuff Set on Fox Station, Tyrus. Since the topic is comedy, David, I want to go to you first. As a racist comedian, <laughs> do you think comedians are all racist? Uh, no. I know. I do think it is funny, though, that the de facto expert on racism in America right now is this white woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, guys, we need to elevate the voices of, you know, people of color and all this stuff. And then she just comes in like, hey, I got, I'll handle these questions. <laughs> <laughs> let me take the let me take the lead on this. All right. Yeah. I would love to know how many black people live within five miles of Robin D'Angelo's house. Mm -hmm. Can we get a survey on that? Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually have the facts here, David. I'm glad you asked. There's no, <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. She's like the what you call the white racist whisperer, right? She's like, I know what they're thinking. That's what. That's how she got famous. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them they do it. They, I think they have latent racist feelings, and they do this as like overcompensation or something. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, here's the thing: as annoying as she is, I still don't want. I, I still do always try to like better myself. So if there's like things like you know, I, I do really sincerely. I'm like, is there things I can do? But she's so obnoxious, and they go so over the top. I think it actually hurts a lot of the reflection normal people would have. Yeah. Because it's so much all the time. There might be, yeah, there might be some, there might be something there that we everybody could do better. But when you become, when the person becomes a parody, it's like you can't. It, she's funnier than Family Guy. Her <laughs> book is better than The Simpsons. I mean, it's let's. It, it, she is absolutely hysterical. All right, Doctor, good to see you. I, I butchered your, I guess butchered what? your name. <laughs> yes, it was supposed to be. Guess what? Nesh what? Yeah. And then I just lost the T. That's okay. It's a good one. My sister, my mom, she's like, just tell them it's Jeanette. Guess what? Neshwat. And I've had that all my life, and it's always worked. So Have you thought about changing your name to something like Smith? <laughs> well, maybe shorten it a little bit if yes, it's easier yes. for you. You know, we had a chat in the green room. I have a little bit of uh, heartburn, and you said I should get an EKG. Yes, that's right. That's a lot for heartburn. Well, how do we know it's heartburn? A little chest pain, a little pressure, a little nausea. Ah. Just want to be safe. we got to protect you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep you healthy. <laughs> <laughs> what if and I told you? We could use one of one of David's uh, razors to, to shave your, all the hair Thank off. Thank you. Chest. Thank you for the for plug. that EKG. What? What if I thought that somebody close to me at work might be putting ground up glass in my oatmeal? No. Who could that be? <laughs> Who would do that to you? 
virus. <laughs> so, you know, you, if, if the United States was a patient, right, and you see this constant obsession with race and everything, what would be your prognosis as a doctor? Are you worried? Well, I think, first of all, there is no room for racism no matter what. We can't fight racism with racism. But when it comes to comedy, I mean, that's it. That's what makes it a little bit edgy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, America needs to lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us laugh. And, of course, laughter is the best medicine. Oh, I've never heard that before. No. <laughs> I've never heard that before. You stay out of this. No, uh, well, okay. <laughs> I guess, like, if you want me to, I can go back home. <laughs> I was gone for a while, and you were—you did miss me, <laughs> or I wouldn't be back. Well, yeah, if that, that missing wore off. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All it took we was two you. days. You know, Tyrus, uh, I never saw a man uh, uh, crush an apple with his hands. <laughs> you haven't. No. Well, now you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what we're seeing is whenever these um, racist. Rec notice they notice racism. They talk really loud, but they say absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when Lightfoot was asked a question, like, why did you do that? And I'm unapologetic because it started a conversation about a conversation yes. that needed to happen. <laughs> Please, follow-up question. Again, I didn't go to journalist school. What's the conversation? Well, the conversation is a conversation about extensional conversations. <laughs> so we're talking about, you can't ask me that. Racist? Yeah. Ra being r racist is meaningless now. Racist is a new term for somebody you don't like. Yeah. It has nothing to do with skin color. It's just, I, I what? You disagree with me, racist. And if it's, it's like white on white racist crime now, it's like everybody's a racist. So if everyone's a racist, nobody's really a racist. Right. So, you know. That's good go. for David. Yes. <laughs> Thank but God. the only thing was, you can't, and you can't be a little bit racist. Yeah. Family guy, racist. Simpsons, they're a little bit racist. You either are you all in or you all out. You don't wear half a clan mask. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, it's just ridiculous the fact that, that we, they play on this because. The reason why they can't talk about it is because they have no experience with it. And that's the beautiful thing, is when people have to make up mm -hmm. about what's racist because they haven't experienced it or seen it. So, of course, you got to make it up because if you can talk about it, you can talk about racist moments. Yeah. Yeah. But racist, just like anything else, is an individual sport. It is not the country anymore. That's a very good point. Kat, he, he raises this fine young man over here, raises some interesting points. The point that everybody says they're unapologetic that, as if that's a good thing, but maybe you should apologize. Yeah, sometimes, right? And it's just the idea of not being afraid to question things. I mean, thinking about the idea when it comes to comedy that intention doesn't matter. And she's saying, okay, like, you know, just punching up, don't punch down. It's like, how about a more important question is, is this supposed to be a punch? Or are you trying to make people laugh? Yeah. I think that is a very important distinction because intention matters in everything else in life. It matters <laughs> when right. a person kills another person. Are you saying that the one thing that's so serious that intention can't matter is jokes? Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. This is a this is probably one of the most important points you have ever made. Oh, thank you. No, it, 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 because people now these these uh, anti-racist uh, activists say intention doesn't matter of course when they preface it does. things. It's like it's like when you when you were t when you're teaching, let's say, is it Huck Finn? And it's got the racial slur in it. And if you if you're the teacher and you bring it up, you will lose your job because intention doesn't matter, right? Right. So, like, if Tyrus, if he, you know, instead of the glass and the coffee seems premeditated, but if he drives your, his car, accidentally hits you, then he's, that's manslaughter. Mm -hmm. exactly. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. He's Ooh. clever, though. <laughs> Up next, violent criminals attack, but liberal laws make it hard. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.